All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to install WSL. We're going to then configure it with Docker and VS Code and launch our first .NET project. Uh, to get started, I want to go ahead and just open up a terminal window. And then to install WSL, it's just WSL dash dash install. If you install it like this, um, it will install the Ubuntu distro, and that's fine for us. So we're going to go ahead and run it, and this is going to take a minute. So I'm going to speed it up through here. So now it's asking for my username, my preferred username. It's going to ask me for a password next once it creates that user. They have to match, which is good. There we go. And the install is said to be successful. And then it's going to drop me off at uh, a terminal uh, command prompt for Linux. Let's install Docker. So to install Docker, we have to install the key so that we can use Docker's app registry. So in order to do that, we'll go ahead and start with sudo app get update. It's going to update our current repository. It's funny in the Docker um, documentation they tell you to install CA certificates in curl and um, for us that's already installed so we don't need to do that so we can then just do sudo install the keyring and then we're going to download uh, their app register key. To do that, we'll use curl. So it's uh, just downloading from download.docker.com slash Linux slash Ubuntu slash GPG. GPG. Got to type it right. The output location we're going to drop it into is keyringsdocker.asc. So we'll run that. The next up, what we have to do is set the file permissions for what we just downloaded. So we'll just do a A plus R. And I'm just using tab to autocomplete those. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to um, add the registry to our registries, our list of registries. And to do that, it's a rather long command, so I'm going to copy and paste it. Uh, and this just uh, adds the signing key to a, a, a registry for us. And then we just need to sudo app get update. Oh, got to spell it right. Okay. So that updates our registry, and now we can go ahead and install Docker from that registry. So if we do app get install, we can install Docker CE, Docker CE CLI, container, Docker build X plugin, and then we want the Docker Compose plugin. Takes just a minute to get those installed. Okay, and now we should be able to run Hello World. It'll pull the image, run it, 
and our Docker installation is good. Now, one of the things you may want to do now that you've finished your Docker installation is just do a um, add a Docker group, which should already be there. Let's see if it is. It is excellent. So now we want to add a user to it. Once we do that, we should just be able to say might have to restart the virtual machine for these to take effect. I bet that's what it's going to do. Um, let's try. Excellent. So running new group Docker allowed us to get it running as our local user. Now, because we're running in w, uh, WSL and I already have Visual Studio code installed, I can actually just do code period uh, to launch Visual Studio code in my current directory. Before I do that, I'm just going to do a make directory and uh, I have this idea for a little project, uh, a remote open manage or a remote managed desktop application. So I'm just going to make a directory called that. I'm going to CD into that directory. And here I'm going to go ahead and launch code. And we're going to say yes, we're going to allow it. And then that launches Visual Studio Code. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is it uh, is not connected to a remote window. So if you click on this open remote window in the bottom left and you select WSL, it'll install the WSL extension, uh, which then will start Visual Studio code uh, connected to our Linux WSL installation. Uh, when you do this, you probably want to come to extensions and you can see that the, it just installed the WSL. But let's install the uh, .NET install tool, uh, C-sharp basic language support, the dev kit. Let's install Docker. Uh, uh, I like the VS Code icons for Mac. Let's install Gitlin Supercharge because that's just nice to have. We minimize that. So here you can see the packages that I'm in, that I have installed. And it's nice Gitlin's installs here, which we're not in a Git repo currently. Uh, Docker install here so you can see those containers that we started earlier so I can go ahead and remove those from here which is kind of nice gives us nice little functionality there not as much as docker desktop but uh, better than nothing now it says no folder open because of connecting to the remote terminal after so I'm going to go ahead and close this now and then just run that exact same code uh, dot code dot period, which just launches code in the current folder, right? So then you can see I'm in remote manage on WSL Ubuntu. So what I can do from here then is I can do control shift P and then tell it I want a new dot dot project. And it lets me know that the dot dot SDK is not installed and according to Microsoft's documentation if I'm running 22-4 I should be able to run sudo apt-get update and this does not work for me I've tried this before but maybe it will this time who knows dot net dash sdk dash Eight dot oh. 
and it's not able to find it. The next step, if this doesn't work, so I always have to register um, the Microsoft Package Repository. And to do that, you run this command here, which is hwget, which is fine. Instead of curl, um, it's probably, yeah, not a big deal. Microsoft.com slash config slash Ubuntu slash, and now our repo version, right? Which is 2204 packages dash Microsoft dash prod dot deb and we output that to and it's just going to drop this in the current directory we're in which is not ideal but we just remove it right after we're done using it so cool so there it is beautiful so now what we got to do is just run it You're in sudo dp kg i to install and then packages. And I just type pa tab or pa pa tab to fill it out. Hit enter. Sets up the package. And now I can remove that package file because I don't need it anymore. sudo app update. It's going to update the packages and it's going to include the Microsoft. Ubuntu packages and now if I just press up until I get back to that same command now it's going to install it okay and you can see that it installed the SDK and the runtimes so we're good right so now I can go ahead and close this let me just close VS code after installing that and reopening it so let's just close it reopen it new project Core Web API, no output, no problems. We definitely got problems, something's going wrong. Can't tell me there's no problems. Okay, when all else fails, you reboot, right? Because this should all be working. Let's open a administrator prompt and do WSL shut down cool should have kicked us out which it did so we just run WSL again now we're back in Now we're gonna to go to that project code. It's connecting to the remote, which now that I think about it, because we rebooted it, may have trouble. I'm gonna close this window. Start over, do it, run it again. Because it shouldn't take that long to connect. Yeah, see, boom, it's in. Okay, now control shift P, new.net project. Hopefully it works everything this time. .NET Core Web API it should take just a second and access. There we go. What name do you want it? All right. Now we're cooking. So I'm just going to call this open remote. No, remote manage dot gateway API. Default directory is fine. And then boom, now we have our little project here. Um, so one of the cool things, cause we all have Docker, cause we have Docker all set up already is if we go to debug and we just say run and debug, we can tell it a uh, Docker container, use a Docker file, .NET core, Linux, uh, the port is fine. 
uh, and then it says include a docker compose file we're gonna say yes and so now you can see it's created this docker compose file for us and this docker file for us and so then if we say debug we have a couple of options right um, we can choose launch web which is just going to run the project and it's going to run it in a web window um, which is trying to do it as SSL and we don't have and it's funny that it doesn't start it at index.html but there we go that's it in the web right but we can also stop that and say docker launch and it'll build the container for us and it launches the site and if we go to swagger boom there we are everything running uh, currently docker won't hot reload um, but you can see that our project now is here and uh, we can just go ahead and remove the hello world image we don't need that one anymore um, but yeah so that's kind of how you can get docker set up in WSL uh, .NET installed and starting up your first project so we're all ready for development here with this project I hope you found this video helpful and get you going on your initial development uh, next time I want to work on just kind of configuring this project with things like uh, Prometheus, OpenTelemetry, and uh, Grafana so that uh, we can start monitoring our application and get all that set up. So if that interests you, think about subscribing. Thanks for watching. Take care.